Welcome to the WG2021 talk on our paper titled Feedback Vertex Set on Hamiltonian Graphs by Dario, Dario Cavallaro and me, Till Flustig. Our leading question for this paper is how computationally hard is the Feedback Vertex Set problem on subclasses of Hamiltonian Graphs? Herein, the feedback vertex set problem asks, given an undirected graph G and an integer K, whether we can remove at most K vertices to obtain forest. In this paper, we have that a Hamiltonian graph is a graph that admits a Hamiltonian cycle, which is a cycle that visits every vertex exactly once. Moreover, we want a Hamiltonian cycle to be additionally given in the input. By our results, feedback vertex set is not only NP-hard on Hamiltonian, but also on planar Hamiltonian graphs, even if a Hamiltonian cycle is additionally given. This comes from the fact that we proved that feedback vertex set uh, remains NP-hard on planar 4 or 5 regular Hamiltonian graphs. Note that uh, on 3 regular graphs, feedback vertex set is solvable in polynomial time. So in fact, for any regular, at least six regular Hamiltonian graph, uh, we showed that feedback vertex set remains NP-hard. So in this talk, I would like to give you some insight how we obtained uh, this NP-hardness results for planar for regular Hamiltonian graphs. Now, our NP-hardness proof on planar for regular Hamiltonian graphs, we start off by the fact that feedback vertex set is NP-hard on planar graphs of maximum degree four. In the first step, we then turn this graph into a planar four regular graph, and in the second step, we then turn it into a planar four regular Hamiltonian graph. I would like to mention here that we recently got to know that Andrea Monaro also proved the feedback that the feedback vertex set is NP hard on planar four regular graphs, so this is our first step. So we give here an alternative proof. If we have a planar graph of maximum degree 4, it's easy to get rid of vertices of degrees 0 and 1, which we can simply delete, or a deg of degree 2, which we simply can contract. So the question remains how to get rid of degree 3 vertices while staying planar. Our idea is to connect pairs of degree 3 vertices, thereby turning them into degree 4 vertices, uh, with chains that consist of this graph element here. And if you look at this part of this graph, you see that every vertex is of exactly degree 4. And uh, moreover, this part here uh, has a feedback vertex set of size at least 3. So one of them is, for instance, this one, which basically means that there is no pass anymore from one endpoint to the other. In the following, we describe how we connect pairs of degree 3 vertices to finally obtain a planar 4 regular graph. We use the fact that any planar graph on n vertices admits a straight line embedding on the 2n minus 4 by n minus 2 grid, computable in quadratic time. So let's say this is the grid where our graph is embedded. Note that not every vertex here necessarily corresponds to a vertex in our graph, and moreover, no edges of the graph are shown. However, Every highlighted vertex in green here uh, corresponds to a degree 3 vertex of our input graph. So first thing we have to do is to pair degree 3 vertices, and we do this in the left to right, bottom to top fashion. So that means that this and this vertex form the first pair, then this and this the second, this and this the third, and so on and so forth. To connect them with our chains, we use two helping grids and then proceed in the following way. Whenever the pair of degree 3 vertices fall into the same column, then we go left top, uh, left up. When they fall into different columns, then we go right down and we proceed in this way. In this fashion, we guarantee that no two chains interfere. Let us proceed with the following illustrative example here. So this is the part of our already embedded graph. Green highlighted vertices correspond to degree 3 vertices. And let's assume that in our left to right button to top pairing procedure, this and this vertex form a pair, this and this one, this with this one, and this with this one. 
So following our procedure, we would now uh, construct this connections via our helping grids. And uh, this would look like this part here when we would insert edges. This is of course not planar. That's why we need our idea of using chains consisting of this graph shown in the beginning. This now turns every vertex here into a degree exactly four graph uh, vertex. And moreover, we know that this new constructed connection will be, there is a solution that actually will disconnect it by choosing the appropriate feedback vertex set here. Okay, so this is how we turn the graph into a planar for a regular graph. And we proceed with turning it into additionally Hamiltonian graph. To turn our four regular planar graph into a four regular planar Hamiltonian graph, we will use a two factor, which is basically a spanning two regular subgraph, or we can represent this as a, as a collection of circuits covering the whole graph. For every four regular graph, we can compute such a two factor in polynomial time. And we then follow the idea by Fleischner and Sabidusi, which is as follows. If we have our graph here, and the two factor, for, for instance, looks like this. So these are the, the covering cycles. Then we will basically will bridge between two, two cycles from the two factor to decrease the size or the number of components in the two factor. And note that every two factor with just one component is because it's spanning a Hamiltonian cycle. So the question is, how do we actually now uh, connect two cycles from the two factor? So we can assume that our graph is connected. That means that two, two cycles from the two factor uh, will be adjacent. So there is an edge between two vertices from uh, each cycle. So we present this here, this, so basically means that the two that the cycle here goes somehow like this and somehow like this. So in this first case, we, we see that two edges from the respective cycles are incident to the same phase. So what we can do now is to introduce this graph here, which basically, if you just look at this graph, has a feedback vertex set of size four. So we can again assume uh, in any solution that it looks like this, which basically disconnects any connection here. On the other hand, we now merged these two cycles into a larger one, where this one goes like this, follows this path, and now goes like this. So in this way, we reduced the number of components in the two-factor. But what is but there is the other case where um, the uh, where the two cycles do not have an edge. Uh, each on the same face, but here we can basically do the trick twice. And now um, we have like that this where our cycles. We now reroute the cycle from here through this gadget, then up through this gadget, and then back here. In either case, we reduce the number of components in the two factor and finally end up with a two factor containing exactly one cycle, which is a Hamiltonian cycle. Clearly this can be done in polynomial time, so we obtained a four regular planar Hamiltonian graph. Here's an, again an overview of some of our results. And next to those graph classes presented here, we considered two more. The first one is the graph class of p order graphs, where for every p tuple of distinct vertices, there is a cycle visiting the vertices in the tuples ordering. And the, other, the second one is the graph class of p Hamiltonian order graphs, which is where we have for every p tuple of distinct vertices, there is a Hamiltonian cycle visiting the vertices in the tuples ordering. So note that it was shown that p order graphs are p minus one connected. That's why we have also this class up here. And we proved that Weber where I said uh, remains NP hard on all of these graph classes, even if a Hamiltonian cycle is additionally given. We will next give a little bit of insight into this result down here.
We proved that feedback weather set remains NP hard on P Hamiltonian order graphs, even if a Hamiltonian cycle is additionally given in the input by an induction on P. So induction start. We use the fact that every Hamiltonian graph is three Hamiltonian ordered, and we already know that feedback weather set remains NP hard on Hamiltonian graphs when a Hamiltonian cycle is additionally given in the input. So let our input graph G be a P Hamiltonian order graph with a Hamiltonian cycle given additionally in the input, which is outlined here on the border. So now we add a K3N, so a click on three N vertices, where N denotes the number of vertices of our input graph G. We additionally add two vertices X and Y, which are adjacent to each other. And now we, we add edges between the vertic uh, vertically arranged layers here. So basically we build the join of any two consecutive layers. So that means that every vertex in G is adjacent to every vertex in the K3N and both X and Y are adjacent to each vertex of the K3N. So this finishes the construction and first observe that an, any feedback vertex set for this graph here needs to delete three n vertices in this part. So we can basically uh, assume that the whole K3n is part of the feedback vertex set. So moreover, why is this graph now P plus one Hamiltonian ordered? And here we use the following effect that if we have a graph G where for every non-adjacent vertices V and W, we have that the degree of V plus the degree of W is at least the number of vertices in the graph plus 2 P, P minus 6, then G is P Hamiltonian ordered. Now observe that the degree of a vertex Z is at least 3 N plus 1 when Z is in the vertex set of G or X and Y. Observe that the only pairs of non-adjacent vertices consist of either two vertices from G or one vertex of G and one vertex which is either, which is either X or Y. So since we assumed that G is a P Hamiltonian order graph, we also know that P is at most N, the number of vertices of G. So if you now plug in the numbers here, uh, plug in these numbers here, then you observe that G is P plus one Hamiltonian ordered. As we additionally require to have a Hamiltonian cycle given in the input, we can also easily get the Hamiltonian cycle in this graph. So we know we started from a Hamiltonian cycle here. So we can, for instance, go like this, then up here, like this, and back. So this finishes the, pr the proof idea for the NP hardness of feedback where set on P Hamiltonian ordered graphs, even if a Hamiltonian cycle is given in the input. To conclude, as the overview of our results here on the right hand side indicates, feedback where set remains NP hard on very restricted Hamiltonian graph classes, for instance, on planar four regular Hamiltonian graphs or on P Hamiltonian order graphs. This is true even if a Hamiltonian cycle is additionally given in the input and we wonder which classic and natural problems uh, become tractable on Hamiltonian graphs or when a Hamiltonian cycle is additionally given in the input. We studied the class of P Hamiltonian order graphs which appear restrictive. However, we proved feedback vertex set on the on this class of P Hamiltonian order graphs to remain NP hard. We point out that in a similar study of ours for the three coloring problem, the computational complexity of three coloring on P Hamiltonian order graphs is left open. So thank you for your attention.